Welcome. Today, I'm going to talk about a few things that have been on my mind for the past couple of days. The tech and shop controversy, why it's controversial, and my thoughts on it. And we're going to talk about retro gaming, why it's in vogue, versus modern gaming, and why it's declining. And I thought these topics were interesting because it kind of ties in with each other in regard to the current state of games. Before I get into this topic, I'm just going to say I have not played Tekken 8. This is based on what I've seen in regard to the Tekken shop. Now, let's get into the Tekken shop. My opinion on the shop is a bit mixed as well. Now, I've seen all sides of the argument. I've seen the argument of them saying, well, they have to do this to offset costs in regard to the game. I think they've said that paraphrase on the Tekken talk. That's where they said it. Something along those words there was that aspect of well you're charging us for something that should be in the base game and then there's the aspect of the tech and shop coins now in my opinion the way it was announced was quite shady i think this is a constant for games of this caliber they call aaa triple a games of having microtransactions not all games of that caliber have them but it seems to be a modern gaming thing ever since the ps3 xbox 360 era due to online becoming more available the reason why i think the shop has received controversy the main point is the principle you've purchased tekken 8 base but i think the real problem here is that they didn't announce this in advance okay i get it probably to offset reviews and whatever but i think they should have announced this way before they should have said, hey, we're going to have this shop in our game. OK, there'll be backlash because microtransactions, I'm not really a fan of. But at least people know what to buy in advance. But the fact they just said we're going to put the Tekken shop in after the initial release, kind of weird. Personally, I knew there was going to be some kind of microtransaction. I knew there was going to be some kind of shop at some point. However, I would have expected that to be announced at the same time. It's not a good look. And I could tell that in the Tekken talk, Michael Murray in particular, I think Michael Murray, looking at his body language, he did not wanna mess with that. He didn't even wanna say, he knows, but I do think that was shady. I think that's the key thing. In regard to microtransactions, am I a fan of them? Personally, no. My opinion on this is okay. They're saying this in regard to the costumes that they're using that money to, I guess, fuel the game. But it feels a bit weird because they couldn't take the sales from what they're making outside of the game and put into building the costumes. Like, we don't know the money child like that. So, I'm not too certain about that, guys. I don't know. They say that, but I'm not going to take everything they say. Literally, I'm taking it with a grain of salt. I just think it shouldn't have been, by the way, if I didn't make my point clear, legacy costumes shouldn't have been paid. The costumes look great. The costumes look amazing. They are true to life, to the T. That is perfect, okay? My thought process was this. I'm thinking it's 30 years of Tekken, legacy characters, legacy costumes. Okay, maybe they could give us the costumes for free or something. Even with the Tekken coins, I've seen people say, as a suggestion, at least convert that into fight money. And that, I think, would have offset the criticism a bit. How do you dice it, in my opinion? I'm not a fan of microtransactions, let's be real. But yeah, it's not cool. I was thinking it's a legacy thing, 30 years of Tekken. Like, give it to us for free, you know? But nah. And I think the craziest thing that I saw in regards to the shop. So there's the firework, I guess, emote, whatever. But I would say don't buy it. You're wasting your money. If you use that emote, so you can only use that <laughs> firework emote 10 times, then you've got to pay for it again. That is so scammy. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me I'm limited. Why does it say times 10 on the emote? Why does it say times 10? Please don't tell me I can only use that emote 10 times. You must be out of your fucking mind if I can only use that 10 times. Oh my god! Oh my god, they've, they've leveled up. They've leveled oh. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. 
I can't believe it. I can't believe I was just about to buy that. Uh, I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted right now. I can't hide it. What? What is that? What is that? Are you, you, a hundred Tekken coins. I can only use it ten times, and it's not even a good emote. I can only do the gritty five times. Imagine if Fortnite did that. The outrage. Something as small as that, like what? And it's not the fact that, oh, I can't afford that. You don't need to buy it, you don't need to buy it. That's not the point of, we don't need to buy it. We know you don't need to buy the thing. I just think personally, based on what I was saying, my theory, it would have made more sense for him to be free. But it's the principle of letting the consumer know in advance, hey, we have microtransactions in our game. But in an ideal world, I would think there would be MTX in a game. But if you're going to let people know, let them know at the same time that the game gets dropped and then people won't be dragging you. But what I would say on the plus side is that Tekken 8 seems like a complete package in regard to the game itself. So I guess that's why people are kind of giving it some leeway. But me personally, I still don't think it's good. <laughs> I just wish they had Team Battle in those kind of modes, the OG modes, because I was thinking 30th anniversary, give us back those modes. Tekken I don't care about. But team battle versus battle. I don't know why I took it out in Tekken 7 and it's not in this game apparently, so I've heard. But you know, it is what it is. So that's my thoughts on the Tekken shop. So let's talk about modern gaming and retro gaming and why I think retro gaming is in and modern gaming well. If we look at the current situation, we're seeing mass layoffs. We're seeing studios closed down. And I think a great example is, of course, Sony. They closed the London studio. I believe they developed The Getaway, which was that 2002 game. Crazy game, but it was great. It was kind of like GTA, but like UK edition. I feel like this decade, as I've said, is quite end game. It's affecting everything. It's affecting every industry. We're seeing layoffs because of the overhiring during the pandemic. We're also seeing at the same time, inflation go crazy. We're also seeing that they cost so much to produce and to make. Even with the leaks of Spider-Man cost over 300 million to produce for a game. That is insane. And at the same time, not much things have changed in regard to the economics. It's quite stagnant. We're past the era of innovation and we're in the era of reiteration. Now, I link this back to retro gaming because we see things like microtransactions, pay to win. We see all these things, milking the consumer. And I had this thought because Harada, um, Katsuhiro Harada, the Tekken exec producer, he had an interesting point that he made in regard to development. He was talking about Tekken 5 and how this was before stakeholders came in. The team was a bit immature in regard to certain aspects of the game. We now have stakeholders having their say. They say they know what goes in a game. They think that's what the consumers want, but they're not the ones that are the artists in the way. There needs to be a balance. And unfortunately, when you have a lot of people saying what they have to say, then there's a disconnect. And you can see that with a lot of games right now. They're putting all these budgets on these games, but it's not consistent with inflation. It's not consistent with the market. You're thinking, where are they getting this money from? Now, I'm not saying that games nowadays are dead. I'm saying, I guess the triple A space, it's stagnant because they are losing money on a lot of sides, on places and on things they used to rely on. We're seeing, for example, Warner Brother Games, they're making their games live service, even though apparently the market is saying, we don't want live service games like that. Because they're losing money with their films, so that's why they're doing this, which good luck with getting out of that. Is it 30 billion or more debts they have? 40 billion, I think. There are definitely new games coming out. There are great independent games coming out, great double A games coming out. I'm not saying that you can't play great games. You still can. It's just the people at the top, I guess, the mainstream, I guess you could say, are quite stagnant. That's what's happening, why I'm seeing anyway. The reason why retro gaming is always going to be in fashion is because nostalgia, legacy will always be in vogue. And I think the pandemic really showed us that, and maybe people always realise this, right? I'm not saying that's everyone. Just how old school games, you had a lot of free play value because there was no online. And people would love that. People love the immersion of, I need to unlock a character, I need to unlock a mode. And it was all complete in the game, boom. That's what people miss. And I think people also miss the emphasis on the art, on the product, and just how it was packaged back then. 
And the fact that certain things that we miss in games now aren't in there, so people are going to go back to what they knew. In some cases, they had better offerings, and we're even seeing games... I can't remember the name of the game, I'll put up on screen. But that Jet Set Radio-inspired game, we're even seeing modern games going back in time. People miss that. I've seen people complain about modern gaming and how it's not how it used to be and this and the third, but it's not going to be right because the economy is not confident. Because if the economy was confident, at least, we would have risky games again. But when you don't have money to play with, your games aren't going to be as crazy or as experimental. And that's why I think people miss that. People are seeing the stagnancy in regards to what can be offered in a game. Overall, these are my opinions on the tech and shop controversy, why modern gaming is kind of stagnant and why retro gaming is in. Thanks for watching this and I'll see you in another video. And that was Digital Digest. Out.